interest in being here. We don't have time, unfortunately, to hear, I'm sure, the rich stories that you all have, but in just a very, you know, a word or a sentence, what sparked your interest in be for being here? So, do you mind, if, Sven, if we yeah. start with you? Yeah, I'm into leadership development. And the, the, the reason why I chose this team is so that I uh, notice or uh, that uh, people are very often um, what I call violent towards themselves, uh, very severe and in some, some kind of, they want to be perfect in some way and uh, that's why I chose a team, how can we, how can I or we transform this severity or this violence, a lack of compassion uh, towards uh, yourself and others. So that's why I chose. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm Randy Butler, and I'm the uh, CEO of the Institute for Sustainable Peace. Mm. And, and as you can imagine, <laughs> even though I thought about going to some others, I felt like, no, I probably have to come to this. I felt a real, almost a moral obligation to be here because I've been doing conflict transformation work in post-conflict societies for quite some time. Uh, the Balkans, Sudan in Houston, Texas, although my fellow Houstonians don't like me very much saying that we live in a post-conflict society. So, when, what, we, we, that we live in a post-conflict society, is that what you've said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in Houston. In Houston. Yeah, most of them. And of course, it's being live-streamed, okay. I'm, I'm, now, I'm now in big trouble back home. Okay, great. <laughs> but, but that's good. <laughs> we want to be in trouble. <laughs> So I'm Barb Ward. I'm from KidsLink, an organization called KidsLink. We're located in the uh, Kitchener uh, in Ontario. And uh, we work with children and youth who have experienced complex developmental trauma. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different than the conflict and violence mm -hmm. uh, you know, internationally that we're talking about. Um, but trauma can be trauma as far as how it, uh, you know, where it's coming from, the context, and how it's impacting um, an individual and the whole social relationship. So I'm interested in, in laying a layer of the social constructionism uh, approach on that, just generating conversations. Thank you. I'm Val Harima. I'm a social worker and a mental health therapist. And a lot of the work I do is with the Inuit in the Arctic. And I work in a lot of hamlet communities where there is extensive domestic violence, drug addiction, and alcohol abuse. And um, my dissertation is concerning uh, school bullying in the Aboriginal context. And I have a dream, uh, and I don't mean to sound like um, Dr. King, but I have a dream that I can act through my PhD as a bridge between cultures in <coughs> understanding um, how uh, healing and transformation can come about um, from a history of colonization and residential school abuse. And that's what I'm hoping to bring forward in my dissertation. I'm Daniel Cho, a minister of the Presbyterian Church in Canada. Um, kind of two hats, one in my local congregation, a uh, certified counselor as well, so naturally I deal with a lot of issues of healing and transformation and brokenness. And also on the national level I've been involved in our national uh, church organization, um, chair of the, what we call the Life and Mission Agency, it takes care of all the programming, local and international. So I've been involved with peace and reconciliation initiatives with uh, governments and with First Nations most recently. So these issues are very near and dear to my heart. Um, my name is Babette Rosabal. Could you speak up a little bit? <clears throat> my name is Babette Rosabal. Um, I, well, I'm very impressed with everybody's um, interest here and what they do. I actually am in private practice and uh, work with a lot of um, adolescents, uh, abuse and trauma, and uh, self injury. So, and I'm really interested in this healing process, and I uh, don't know that much, so I'm really interested in uh, hearing what everybody has to say. Thank you. I'm Karina Lapa. I'm, I'm from Brazil originally, but living in Florida. Um, I'm also in private practice, however, I offer a lot of services to. Um, as a provider to the Florida, um, like a victim advocate for victims of crime. Um, also worked with sexual abuse for the past eight years. Mm -hmm. I'm also a provider for the National Center for Missing and Exploited <coughs> Children. So everything that is related to trauma is my passion. So the, the name brought me here. 
I'm Camila Spina. I come from Colombia and I have been working in peace building processes within armed conflict context. Mm -hmm. And my dissertation for the Taoism PhD program is about peace building practices within early child early childhood and their families and the communities. And I also work in some other research programs related to children and young people. Different contexts. Some of them are art conflict, and some of them have other kind of violence, and just for promoting the building processes. I'm Claire Fialka, and I am co founder of a group called Appreciative Action, and we specialize in working with NGOs in Sub Sahara Africa. Um, in addition to that, I, um, I'm a professor at the Massachusetts School of Professional Psychology in Boston. We have a global mental health program, so I'm also interested in training and teaching about um, mental health issues, especially relating to refugees and trauma. I'm Jeannie Coquel. I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia, and I'm a consultant, I'm a facilitator, I'm a writer, I'm a speaker. Uh, and what draw me, drew me here is the notion of healing. I do a lot of work with what I'm facilitating teens in conflict. Uh, well, I was really thinking about the healing aspect, one of the chapters of the book that Joan and I just co-authored, Appreciative Inquiry in Higher Ed, The Transformative Force, is called Being Authentically Alive. And it's actually grounded in three years ago, I almost died in a car accident. So it was using Appreciative Inquiry to live through that, that trauma, and the ALIVE model is an acronym for Appreciate, Love, Inquire, Venture, and Evolve. <laughs> um, hi, I'm sorry, I forgot my name tag. Um, my name is Teresa Young. I uh, live in Washington State. Um, I work with the Northwest Property Development Center. Um, we're a small uh, nonprofit that works specifically with cooperative businesses. Can you hear? Uh, barely, yes. Yeah, okay, I think we have to remember yeah. to speak up. Sorry, sorry. thank you. <laughs> um, I work specifically with cooperative businesses, and what, really what attracted me to this is the idea of healing beyond conflict because a lot of times groups come together to do something but they end up because the differences they have they, they get in conflict you know and also recently some conflict has touched my personal life you know and so I really want to know about the, what other people have to say and my name is Ann Clendenin I am a doctoral student at the Taos Institute program uh, my dissertation is on lesbian widows. Um, I have a particular interest, long-standing, in LGBT rights and um, the trauma associated with the denial of those rights in this country. Um, I also work in um, the Pima Indian community and in uh, Arizona and see the results of historical trauma daily, um, as well as the ongoing trauma that happens from just the whole reservation system. So um, I come at it from a personal and a professional um, angle. I'm Ellen Barry, and I have um, worked with prisoners and their children and families in the United States for about 35 years. I started an organization called Legal Services for Prisoners with Children, working mostly with women prisoners and their children. Um, just recently, in the last year, I've uh, <clears throat> taken on the directorship of a program called Insight Prison Project, which um, we do transformative restorative justice in prisons with men, women, and youth um, <coughs> around healing and transformation. We also work with uh, survivors of violent crime who are actively uh, involved in the restorative justice groups that we do. Um, we do mindfulness, yoga, meditation, cognitive behavioral. Um, and um, I am particularly interested in extending the analysis of healing and trauma to fully include people who are both inside and outside the walls. There's so much trauma that um, the people that I work with as prisoners who uh, have, have experienced and um, we're in the process of trying also to 
expand the restorative justice and healing concepts to include, fully include people of color and communities of color. So. Um, thank you all. Um, I'm really um, in awe of the richness and depth of the experience and, and I know the, the wisdom that's here. And a little bit about me and how Kristen and I came to this, and I won't speak for Kristen, but um, Kristen and I actually met in San Diego when there was the uh, Taos Institute's conference uh, on peace building, conflict, conflict resolution, and mediation from the intimate to the international. And, uh, and we do parallel work, but very different. And for me, because of the work I'm doing primarily in South Africa, uh, at the invitation of a black South African community leader, um, combining narrative uh, practices along with appreciative inquiry and other social construction ideas and, and practices around post-conflict transformation for, uh, for individuals and communities, and work back in Minneapolis, um, in terms